Hello everyone, I am here again, Thais, and I have some really, really good news for all of us, and especially for myself. As some of you probably already know, maybe some don't really know, um, but I was, and that was also the reason I couldn't make much YouTube videos this week. I still did, but I couldn't do much. Um, I, I was on my way to the road of BlizzCon. I was... Uh, I qualified myself for the road to BlizzCon for the European Regionals and for the European Championship. Uh, what happened this weekend? And something that I could never expected uh, for a long time actually happened. And I can say that I am the new European. I am that I'm the first European champion now. And it is something I still cannot really imagine and I still don't believe yet maybe. But I am super happy and even a bit proud of myself. So, um, yeah, it's uh, something that just overwhelms me still a bit. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy to say that, that I am the first European champion. And uh, I, can sh I can even show you the trophy. This was, this was why I did it for the European. Can you see it? Uh, I don't really see it. But this is what I won. The European trophy. It says European Road to BlizzCon Champion and uh, yeah, I'm super happy about it. That was what uh, I wanted to start with. Just to everyone that didn't know yet that um, th um, that this happened this weekend. And um, I also want to uh, talk about the decks that I played. Because of course it's cool to say that uh, I won the European Championship. But it's also cool to talk about the decks that I played there. Especially uh, here on YouTube. So um, that is what I will go to now. Um, I will start with my um, I will start with my Druid deck, and the Druid deck went really, really well at uh, at the European Regionals. Uh, the Druid deck uh, went 4-0 for me. It went also 4-0, I think, or 4-1 in the qualifier. My Druid deck was just uh, like I consider, as everyone knows, I consider uh, Druid being the top uh, one of the top two decks at the moment. And I always br I bring it a lot to tournaments, and it is just too consistent. I know some people don't like it, maybe, but Druid is super good in tournament uh, because there is a slower meta. Druid gets even more consistent and better. So um, to the to the deck, as you see, it's an uh, there are some standard things in it, but there are some really new, interesting tech choices into it. As you see, because the meta was um, like I prepared really well. I I played. Um, um, I went uh, with my teammates, life coach. We took a boot camp. We took a boot camp at his home in Vienna, and we just practiced from nine to seven for six days in a row. Of course, with some breaks between into it, but we were super motivated. We practiced all day long. Um, we played. We analyzed. We um, talked about the game, decisions, mulligans, um, and everything. And um, I'm really happy because he also made it to BlizzCon. Uh, that it worked out both for us because we worked really hard and we really had a good benefit from it and um, Yeah to the deck as you see um, I play um, only wonder nasus the reason that I play only wonder nasus is that the warrior uh, deals really easily with it um, The meta is really a lot with warrior druid handlock demon locks Paladin kinda and a bit hunter that like that is what the meta is about and the Darnassus is really not a guard you really want against Warrior. It's uh, like, n not just because you don't want it at turn 2, but it, like, you have to cut something if you want to play a an, an second Darnassus. And I consider the other cards just being so much more valuable. Also, when you play double Darnassus, the second Darnassus is a really bad top deck. You don't want to draw it at the end of the game. So that was my reason to only play one Darnassus in a really control heavy meta. The place that the second Darnassus uh, had, of course, there comes in the second BGH. And my lineup was really focused on winning against handlocks and demon locks. Like, that was what my lineup, most, li uh, most of it was about. So, that was my reason for playing a second BGH. And especially in Druid, you can avoid, uh, avoid playing double BGH. The BGH is so important in the deck. Um, uh, the Druid has no removal, so sometimes in some matchups, and even sometimes in a mirror matchup, you really rely on having a uh, BGH. And yes, two are getting a bit situational, but sometimes just having him is already important enough. And um, I actually di really didn't regret bringing double BGH in my Druid deck. Uh, what I find really important, and I know some people don't even play with an Ezra Drake, I find Ezra Drake being way too valuable at the moment in Druid. 
Um, because your curve gets lower now, uh, if you compare the Druid list to like 2-3 months ago, you play Darnassus, you play, uh, like most of the decks play double Darnassus, you play B the BGH, the shit, like, your curve is getting way lower, we also don't play any Ragnaros, no scenario, so, my curve is really low, and what is really important in a low curve Druid deck is that you draw, and that is why I really want to play double Azure Drake and um, one Harrison, like, Yes, Harrison is not always a card draw, but you can consider it at, at, uh, as at least half a card draw. So yeah, for me, it's really important in the 5 slot to draw to play with a lot of cards that draw me. Uh, Harrison, of course, super, super good against Patron Warrior. Yes, it is not good against um, Druid. It's not really good against Handlock, or it's not good against Handlock. It might get on your Axis, but it's not really likely. Pretty okay against Paladin and meh against Hunter, so I was just, uh, like, I think the swing that the Harrison Jones gives you in a patron matchup uh, is worth the if it's worth the the thing where it hurts you in the Druid Handlock Paladin matchup, so I was just really happy, uh, or I just really wanted to play in Druid of the Claw, and I actually considered Druid of the Claw being not a good card at all, I was even thinking of almost cutting the, sev the, the second Druid of the Claw, but I think it's just too important to play the curve as a druid. As you see, I only played uh, otherwise with 3-5 drops. And I consider, consider that being not enough. So I still played with one druid of the claw. And the reason why I was not the biggest fan anymore of the druid of the claw was... Um, is mainly because uh, he is not really good at the moment in the meta. Um, the warrior deals all the time with it. Yes, it doesn't die to a single card, but... They just uh, slam it with a Despite, Execute, um, even trade with the minions. It's just okay, but not really good. In the mirror, it's okay, but nothing more than okay. Like, you you probably still want your Acid Drake, your, your Shredder over it. And against Handlock, the card is just way too slow. It doesn't do much. He plays a Giant, and yeah, I can play in 4-6. Wow. It's just uh, not something I really like. And um, yeah, against Paladin, he is reasonable, but also not... Powerful enough. If they blessing of kings a minion, if they haven't through silver, it just hurts you a lot. And uh, that was why I was not a big fan of the druid of the claw. Like stats wise, it's just not an insane minion. Five mana, four sick. You just pay for what you get. And the reason people like it is because of the choose option that you had. Like sometimes you can go really aggressive, but I consider the value of this deck more than the aggressive stand in it. And um, some other interesting cards, Sylvanas. Um, Super good for mirror matches, super good, it's the card you want, and um, really good against Handlock too, and sometimes pretty annoying for for the warrior to deal with, like, if they have a death fight up and they want to go with patrons, then they cannot play their patrons before attacking, What's what destroys uh, their one damage wall in effect, so, uh, yeah, I considered even Sylvanas being pretty reasonable against patron, and that is why I think Sylvanas is a really good tech choice now, and something you should play with. In tournament meta uh, the rest as uh, you see double combo double combo just too powerful um, don't cut double c uh, combo any time out of the druid deck and the rest is uh, kind of standard double shade I really like shades they just keep growing you can it's also a minion that people that other decks just can't remove like a warrior cannot remove it and handlock at some moment they cannot uh, remove it anymore keeper just gives a lot of flexibility yes he is not the best card sometimes but I think you will never regret Keeper in the deck. Shredder, the best 4 drop in the game, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, Emperor just get, gets some really good uh, combos off sometimes. Dr. Boom, it's, it's just Dr. Boom. He is super strong. Um, yeah, Lore. I was considering Living Roots, but in a control meta, I will not play Living Roots. Ancient of War, uh, a card that was long time in my deck, but at the end it felt short because uh, I really wanted to play Sylvanas. And um, yeah, he's super good in the mirror matches, but not that really good against Handlock, not really good against Paladin, not really good against um, Warrior. So I considered cutting it out. So yeah, my Druid, it went, it won all the matches, it never lose. So I was really happy with my Druid deck. And um, yes, for Leather, it might not be the optimal list, but for tournaments, super, super good in Conquest. So that was the Druid. My uh, Warlock, and this is the most interesting deck, and this is the deck that I worked more than uh, four days on. Like, I spent more than four four days, um, for, uh, like a lot of hours, uh, to build this deck. And 
um, the conclusions that I had was that the first big conclusion that I had was that uh, Demon Lock is better than Handlock now. It has a better matchup against Patreon. Um, it has more swing turns that is really important against um, against uh, Druid, for example, if you can get an early Jaraxxus. Like a Void Caller is super annoying for Druid. And in the mirror match, if you tech your deck well, it doesn't hurt you in the mirror match. So, um, yeah, I was super happy. And it's also better against Paladin even. So, I was super happy of bringing Demon Lock. And it went for me 4-1, doing really well. Um, also doing super good in the qualifiers. So, um, really happy with the Demon Handlock I played. And I'm just getting down to the cards. And um, before we talk about specific cards, it's really important to tell me uh, the conclusion I had out of my practice games. And... Um, the strategy I wanted to take with my Warlock. Um, the strategy I wanted to take was not being reactive. I came to the conclusion if this deck uh, was on the re reactive spot against a Patron. Um, like you don't want to give Patron any time. If you give, if you give Patron enough time, they're going to crush you. If you give Druid too much time, they're going to crush you. If you are uh, behind against a Warlock uh, in a mirror match, it's just problematic. You want to be ahead. And try to finish them before they have all their giants and everything on. So you don't want to be reactive again. And uh, so uh, with that conclusion in mind, I tried to make a deck uh, that will be most of the time being ahead and snowball that point. And um, to clarify that a bit in the deck that I that you see here, um, I cut out some reactive cards. I cut out a dark bomb, and that is actually questionable. It is not because Dark Bomb is bad, but it was because I wanted to play other cards over the Dark Bomb. I only play with one heal bot and people, and this is an advice I will never give you for leather. Don't do that. Don't cut your second heal bot. But for tournament play, if the meta is really slow, what does the heal bot do? Against the uh, Druid, you don't need it. It's always, you're like, you can never really combine it. Against in the mirror matches, you don't want to have this card at all. It's super slow, not valuable. It doesn't even matter the life. Um, and against Patron, it's the same. Your life doesn't really matter at a certain point. Like maybe later, but at a certain point, it doesn't matter. And you don't want to have it. It's a dead card all the time. You want to have pressure cards. And then the most interesting cut. I cut at Shadow Flame. And that is something um, that is questionable. Um... But if your opponent doesn't know you cut Shadow Flame, and that is really interesting about tournament play, like it's a it's a sort of a mind game. If you cut Shadow Flame and people don't know you uh, cut Shadow Flame, they still play around it. Like I had it also in my tournament. Uh, people playing around Shadow Flame, like they was they were like, yeah, if he, he can molten Shadow Flame if I put him too low. So I just um, um, like my opponent still plays around it and it is really strong if your opponent still plays around cards that you are not even running because it's he plays around a card that doesn't matter if he runs around because you don't have it and you can make optimal turns um, you can abuse it because he you know he's gonna play around it but you can play other cards still and you have more you have cards that are uh, that can do other things um, and it, it, it just gets super powerful if he doesn't know that you're not playing it. And yeah, it, it just totally out mind game my op opponent in one of the games where he played as a like so much around Shadow Flame. And I was just like smiling myself there, knowing I don't even have it. And I could just abuse it by keep playing my minions. And at the end, the threats were just too much for him, and I won my game. So yeah, I'm really happy with the to choice. I'm not sure if there's something you, like it's not something you should always do, but these are the small things. Uh, sometimes just uh, making sure or uh, cutting a card that nobody expects, and uh, it's really strong. You can even do it with Hellfire. Like sometimes you can also you can also play Double Shadow Flame if you think it's the meta for Double Shadow Flame and no Hellfire. You will see people play around Hellfire. I'm pretty sure. And to the rest of the deck. Um, as you see, I play 5 demons. Morganis, Lord Jaraxxus, Doomguard, and Double Void Caller. I came to the conclusion 5 demons is the perfect uh, solution. 4 demons, it's not good enough. If you have the Void Caller, you, it's, you, don't, you don't have often your Jaraxxus or Morganis with it. And if you are going to run too many, if you're going to run more demons, you really rely on having the Void Caller. If you have no Void Caller, you have some dead demons in your hand. And you only want the really powerful demons. So I came to the conclusion, these five demons are the five demons to run. Because they are even pretty okay to good from himself. 
Doom Guard, I even used it in two out of my five games as a finisher. It just gives an, a really uh, big ability that all your op opponent has to play around by knowing that you have a five, de a five mana, uh, five attack charge in your deck. Yeah, really strong. And the other demons, super strong too. If you can get them early on the board with Fog Garler and your or Maganis, it's just an insane uh, game changer. Um, I, the Giants, they are too good. In any control meta, always play with these Giants. They are so strong um, against Druid, against in the mirror match, against Warlock, you always want them. So uh, yeah, Giants, Molten Giants can, can make really big swings happen. Uh, Mountain Giants way too strong early in the game. So uh, yeah, I really love that. Uh, I was even thinking of cutting Dr. Boom, but at the end I thought it most, might still help me in the mirror match. Um, against Druid not ter being terrible and against uh, Patron, bit questionable, but... Um, double Hellfire. Uh, the reason of Double Hellfire is um, because it's not even bad nowadays against Druid. Um, I practiced a lot against Druid, like we took one or two days just playing only this matchup. Uh, Handlock and Demon Lock against Druid. And Hellfire was sometimes really nice against uh, the, the Darnassus within Shredder, Darnassus within Shade, Shade within Shredder, or even the three together. Like, it was pretty nice. And as everyone knows, it's really good against Paladin. It's really good against Patron. So that was the reason I played with double Hellfire and not with any Shadow Flame. Um, I also played double BGH. And that is something, as I explained already a bit in my Druid, I, target to, I really target Handlock. My lineup was made to beat Handlock, and if I can beat Handlock with all my three decks, then, and and I think almost everybody is gonna bring it, uh, it's super strong, and again, it's something questionable, but something that paid off so well for me, so I'm really happy with the check charge, and that's also something a bit about the double all, super good in the mirror, it's not bad against Paladin, it's not bad against Patron, it doesn't do much against Root, but I was, uh, like the silence effect, pretty nice, so, um, yeah, another thing, low tap, and that is something that uh, is not particularly strong himself in this deck, but something that really fits my strategy. Um, as I already explained, I don't want to be reactive. I want to be ahead. I want to be abusing my cards that I play. I want to make him uh, less valuable turns happen. And low tap is an insa insanely good card for that. So that was the reason that I want to play with low tap, not having a reactive heal bot or dark bump in my deck or in shadow flame no i wanted that five drop that i can just play at turn five and give me an edge he cannot remove it he cannot remove my other minions and i can uh, snowball from that point and as everyone knows emperor is super good in handlock like if you can just play an emperor like the value that you get as an handlock where you have a lot of times seven or eight cards in your hand super super powerful so yeah i think that is the main of the deck uh, double argus um i know some people Sometimes cut an Argus. Don't do that in a Demon Headlock. Like you want to also turn to Void Collar. You want to turn to Jiraxxus. Uh, turn to Drakes, Watchers. I would always uh, go with Double Argus. I think it's just too good. So yeah, that was my Demon Headlock. And super interesting thing. And a super well teched um, deck in my opinion. And then the Patron Warrior. Um, as you see, it's a uh, Patron Warrior um, I am pretty known for. Uh, I love the shield block, shield block, shield block, shield slam version, and I came to the conclusion that is the version I should go with. Uh, shield slam, shield block, um, just having that extra removal. Like this is a removal you want even in a mirror match. You sometimes want against Felden. You really, really want against Handlock. Like having this extra removal card, and you even want it against Drew to sometimes shield block, shield slam. So I came to the conclusion that is something I really want in my uh, Patron Warrior deck. And the, the cards that I cutted for it are really interesting. I only play with one Fire Warrix. And this is something uh, that I did because of the me tournament meta. In the tournament meta, Druid is super popular. It's an okay card against Druid, but not insane. Um, Handlock. This, card, this is the last card you want against Handlock. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. So, and in the mirror match, he's okay, but not good at all, or not super good. It's not your win condition. Like, how you win mirror matches is by just combo comboing them down, or going with the patrons first. And it's not, the Fire Warrix doesn't really help with that. And um, another super interesting card, guys. I play Brawl in my patron. And that is something nobody really did, but, um, or some people always did, but... It, was, it is for sure not a popular card at all in Patreon. It doesn't even fit the Patreon strategy. 
where you want to just cycle your deck, go ahead and just abuse combo turns. And that is something Brawl doesn't even do. But um, yeah, if you know that Handlock is super powerful, this card is awesome. If you know Patron is super powerful, this card is awesome. Like imagine he going for 5 or 6 Patron and you just Brawl them away. Against Druid, it's not super good, but it's not bad either. Like you have situations they have 3 or 4 minions and you can just Brawl them away. Against Paladin, not that bad. So, um, yeah, I uh, I played Brawl and the Brawl went so good for me. Like, I had some really insane Brawls. And not only that, like, people saw I played Brawl and people were playing a roll bra around Brawl like crazy. And I was like, wow, it is pretty good to have a Brawl in the deck. And, uh, yeah, it really paid off for me. Uh, the Patron Warrior went 4-2. It was the deck that went a bit... Like, my other decks went insane and my... Uh, Patron Warrior went really good, so um, it was not best, but it did still really really good like the scores that I had went pretty insane So uh, really happy with this Patron Warrior um, For the rest I only play one goal because of the slower meta you don't want to have a uh, Two mana card that doesn't draw you uh, not really good um, I think double armor slip is just too good especially if you play in shield slam uh, It gets a bit better even so I would always go with double armor slip. I think it's just uh, this is a good activator for battle rage. It just gives so much options with the deck. It slows the game down. I love the armor smiths. And, uh, of course, we they, we play the double fronting and war songs. Um, Despite super good. I played one Nomish Inventor. It's a bit of a slow card, but in a control heavy meta, it's for sure fine. And yeah, the rest uh, speaks for himself. Um, patron, of course, and try to abuse the patron. And um, yeah, that were my three decks um, that I played in the. That I played in the European Regionals and that I uh, won the European Championship with. And now, the end of the month, I will go to BlizzCon, represent Europe and try to take the BlizzCon trophy. Try to win the championship with me. Um, I want to make an, uh, also a shout out to my teammate Life Coach. Um, we practiced, like, as I said already before, um, we took a boot camp, boot camp at his home. Um, we practice for nine uh, for six days in a row every day from nine to seven of course with breaks but um, and we analyze so much like like I have to say I learn a lot from life coach from all his knowledge from all his experience how we focus on the game how good his analyzers are uh, game sharing everything so um yeah that was really awesome and um yeah I really had a good moment uh, at Prague uh, all the support that people people give me online offline like having their seven or eight K people watching uh, in the ar arena uh, all the support that people gave me online um, it was super awesome and something I couldn't even imagine almost so um, yeah it was an uh, it was an awesome weekend for me I still cannot believe that I uh, am the European champion now but um, yeah um, I'm super happy, and uh, I hope that I and uh, I wanted to share the decks with me uh, with you, and uh, yeah, I hope you like uh, the decks that I made. Uh, as I said, pretty tacked for tournament play, and uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, all have an awesome time.